Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are going through the entire book of Revelation from chapter one all the way to chapter 21. And so right now we're in Revelation 18, just started. Just started Revelation chapter 18, and you're more than welcome to break your Bible open to Revelation 18 and start right here, especially if there's a, a verse in here that you're trying to learn more about or to study, or you can go back to the very first video and just binge watch all of them and catch up. We're here for you any time. So Revelation 18 verse one says, after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, fallen, fallen, is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped as high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. This is the destruction of Babylon the Great. And all through our study together, we've talked about Babylon. We don't know uh, where Babylon is, if it's a current country or a current city or a current state right now, or if it's something that's coming in the future. We've said in previous episodes that Babylon is the home of this false religion, right? They've made up their own religion. They worship their own things, their own way. And this here in Revelation 18 is another side of that. And here we're not focusing so much on religion as much as we are focusing on their material wealth and their greed, and their lust for money and possessions and things. Babylon has become this place where they get anything and everything they've ever wanted. And it's the love of stuff, right? And obviously, they're committing uh, immorality with her. That's what the text says, that the people who live there commit immorality with her, that they are uh, entwined in her, the, the, the possessions, the stuff has got them in a snare, right? They love their stuff, they love their things so much that uh, they're unwilling to give God the things that are His. They, they hold on to everything. They say, this is all ours, right? Everything is ours. And, and God says to His own people, right? He says, my people, get out. My people, get out. I mean, you think about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Sodom and Gomorrah were two cities that were going to be destroyed. And God looked and said, you know, my people, there's only Lot and his family. That's it. So he said, you know what? I'm not going to spare the city for just y'all. So get out, right? Get out. So God says the same thing. He says, my people come out of her. Don't, don't think that you can fight this. You know, the, the love of stuff, the love of material wealth, it compromises you. It makes you do things that you think you wouldn't do. I mean, you, you might think, oh, I don't, I don't do that. But, but think. I mean, think about all the things that you're willing to do in order to save money. You ever copied a CD or a song? You ever borrowed a book without buying it? Have you ever stolen Netflix? Right? All these little things we do because we love money right? Don't want to spend it. Got to keep it. Got to hoard it. God says, you, you can't fight it. Get out. Get out. My people need to leave. God also says, her sins have piled up to heaven. Think about another city that made a building to heaven, right? Babel, the Tower of Babel, which is where Babylon comes from, right? So they made the Tower of Babel thinking that they were full of themselves, that they, that they were gods themselves, that they could reach God and be equal with God. And God knocked their little tower over 
Now God says, y'all have made a new tower. <laughs> and this new tower is, is your sin. This is how much the love of money takes hold of you. Verse 6 says, Pay her back as she herself has paid back others, and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her cup that she has mixed. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart, she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. For this reason, her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. Can you hear the arrogance of this city? Hear the arrogance of the people who live in this country. They say, I'm queen. I'm in charge. But feel sorry. Feel ashamed. I won't feel sorry. I'm not sorry for how I live. Right? This is boastful. This is prideful. And God says, you, you don't feel sorry? Okay, fine. I'm going to destroy you in one day. The truth is, right, about our own things, about our own stuff, and how we, how we are with our material possessions, what, what do we have that God couldn't take? Anything? Don't, we should never be boastful or prideful about our great car or our wonderful house or, you know, our stereo or a big TV or anything. Like, there's nothing we have that God couldn't take away. I mean, I live in Texas, right? And you've probably heard about the winter storms that have taken place. I mean, our Facebook feed is filled with people who have had serious damage to their homes, right? Lost their possessions because of snow, weather, right? In, in a single couple of days. Just last week it was snowy, last week it was sunny, and this week it was snowy, and psh, stuff's gone right? Money, there's no security in it. We, we say there is. You know, oh, you should set up some security in the bank. There's no such thing as financial security. There's no such thing as your stuff will save you or secure you, right? If you, if you think that there's something in your life that God couldn't take away from you, tell him. <laughs> Challenge him. I dare you, right? There's, there's nothing we think money secures us, but it doesn't. And these people of Babylon, they've boastfully said, we're not sorry. God says, okay, you're not sorry, I'll destroy you. I'll destroy you in a day. And I'm not saying it's gonna happen in our lifetime, probably won't, right? Probably won't, but it makes me think about my possessions and the way I Think about the things I own, the way I spend my money, the way I think about money, the pursuance of it, the need to make more, the time I spend making money compared to the time I spend with things that matter, like people, relationships, love, family, investing in the lives of somebody else. You can't take it with you, right? Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.